Hello everyone, it's Alina. Welcome to my Soap General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. On today's episode of General Hospital, we see Drew and Sam reach a truce, Sasha counsels Nina, and Anna lends a hand to a friend. While chatting with Maxie on the phone in the office, Felicia at General Hospital examines the photo memory wall. Joined by Anna, they embrace after she ends the call. Felicia would not be wanted to accomplish this alone by Bobby, according to Anna. On their way to Bobby's office, Felicia is overwhelmed by the number of photographs displayed on her desk and begins to cry. At Anna and Robert's wedding, she spots one of them in a committed relationship. Bobby is the rock for Felicia's loved ones and the hospital, according to Felicia. The photographs, according to Anna, depict a life well lived. As Felicia sobs, Anna consoles her and they begin to pack up her office, where they discover several of her former caps and badges. After the office is packed up, Anna realizes it's a lot looking back at someone's life, but there is beauty in it as well. Felicia believes doing this with her helps. Felicia responds to a call from the lab by saying she will be present to get the results immediately. Anna asks what that is about. Felicia says, the living, and smiles. Dan finds Laura napping in Cyrus's room and nudges her awake. Cyrus hasn't regained consciousness, and she asks Dante whether the PCPD knows who attacked her brother. They come out to the hall and Dante has no suspect, and Laura knows Cyrus has no shortage of opponents. They notice Cyrus stirring through the window and head back in. Cyrus wakes up and smiles at the angel with the face of his sister. Laura excuses herself to seek a doctor. Dante asks Cyrus what happened to him. Cyrus waxes he is grateful to have been taken to General Hospital for recovery. Dante asks who did this to him, tell him, and he'll bring them in. Dante exits and informs Laura that Cyrus won't cooperate with the law and says his assailant is not to be blamed. Dante suggests she could pull the truth out of him. Laura walks into his room and asks if Cyrus will tell her who beat him. He cautions her once she knows, she may be sorry she asks. Laura wants to let her worry about that, so he discloses it was Sunny. She is astonished and says Sunny isn't that easily provoked. She knows he has a temper and damages things, but for Sunny to beat someone up himself is quite unusual. Cyrus deems Sunny a genuinely unhappy man, and he took his feelings of hurt and betrayal out on him. Cyrus reveals Sunny was lied to by his spouse, and he was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. Laura exits and talks to Dante. She tells him that Cyrus was beaten by Sonny, and Cyrus was privy to something Sonny didn't know. Dante doesn't know what that is. Laura returns to Cyrus and claims she told Dante the truth. Cyrus is startled given how she views Sonny. She names him one of her oldest pals. He adds she's still protecting Sonny even after he attacked her brother, and Sonny is no better than the man he used to be. Laura tells Cyrus if he wants to be a member of her family— then he must prove he is worthy of her confidence via his deeds, not by repeating the Bible. Cyrus will do whatever she wants of him. Cody comes upbeat at the deception office and quickly sees something is awry with Maxie. She tells him that Bobby Spencer died. He is apologetic, and he only met her briefly at the ball. Maxie fills him in on possessing BJ's heart and how Bobby was everyone's go-to person for aid. She can't fathom Port Charles without Bobby. Cody sits down and their chat turns to how he's going to spend his latest big paycheck. He informs Maxie that he's thinking about using his paycheck to invest in properties, and he's going to invest in Serenity, the estate he grew up on. He feels it is a chance to bring everything full circle, given Domink was his mother. Maxie remarks that he's the heir to Leopold's riches as well. Maxie confesses this feels a bit hollow, and urges him to contemplate what his mission is. Cody doesn't think he has a purpose. Suddenly Felicia appears and adds, nonsense we all do. Felicia is apologetic for eavesdropping, but Cody thinks Felicia could help him discover his purpose. Felicia believes first he needs to be honest with himself and others, starting with his DNA tests. He again claims the test revealed he wasn't Mac's son. She says she did a new test on him behind his back. Drew visits Sam at home, and she asks how Carly is. He adds she's devastated and she should likely call Carly as there's further news he doesn't want to get into. Drew is there to pick up Scout to acquire her new uniform. 
Sam wishes he had called first as Scout she claims won't Scout be going has to been West a ball of worry and has been having nightmares about this. Drew can't believe she took this decision without him. Sam explains she had to placate their daughter, and she's sorry she didn't speak to him about this, but he should have talked to her about Westmont before springing it on Scout and her. He snaps immediately but calms down and admits he did blindside her. Sam feels they can both do better, and Drew wishes she had come to him if Scout had been feeling this way for a while. Sam thought that Scout might alter her mind but she didn't, and she had to consider about her well-being. Drew snaps, and I don't, so you get the final word when it comes to our daughter. Sam yells back, and he is sorry and doesn't know why he picked a confrontation with her. She asks why did he and what is going on with him. Drew says he assumes he was wounded that Scout didn't tell him she didn't want to go, and that she went to Sam instead. Sam says she thinks Scout didn't want to disappoint him, and she knows he missed a lot of time with Scout when Victor had him locked up. Drew laments, and now I lost more time because of Mena. Drew lets Sam in off-screen as to what Nina did, and Sam thinks it's no wonder he came in hot today. Drew maintains their troubles had nothing to do with Nina. He made decisions regarding Scout without her, and that was terrible. She didn't want to belittle his selections either, and Westwood is a fine school, and in time Scout may appreciate the concept. Drew sees her point, especially given he was about to uproot her during the school year. He swears to make sure when he sees Scout to remind her that no matter what she does, he'll always be her biggest fan. Sam informs him that Scout's his too, and she's not the only one who cares about him. She tells him she's here if he ever needs to talk. He thanks her and heads off. At Sasha's, Nina leaves another message with Willow imploring her to contact her and let her explain. She realizes she sounds weak and Willow won't call her. Sasha says to give her some time, but Nina believes there is no explanation for what she did. Nina thanks Sasha for putting her up last night. Sasha is sure when she speaks to Willow, she'll find the appropriate words to explain. Nina thinks she shouldn't be here, considering Sasha is on good terms with Willow, Michael, and Carly, and Sunny regards of her as family. Sasha says and they know she considers her family too. Nina complains she's once again earned herself public enemy number one. Sasha tells her that she still has pals. However, Sasha says no matter how upset she was at Carly and Drew, she also injured their tiny daughters, and that's unlike her. Nina says she experienced tunnel vision at the time. Sasha thinks if Nina could forgive her, others can forgive Nina. Sasha encourages her to just give it time and don't push it, and she may get what she wants. Nina says what she wants and what she deserves are two different things. Nina observes everyone warns Sunny she was a liar, and everyone thinks she's not mother material. Sasha points that Christina and Dante supported her marriage, but Nina is afraid Christina will lash out at her soon enough. Sasha remarks the kids still love her, but Nina predicts Carly will make sure they detest her. Then there is Willow, Michael and Sunny, who will also help. Sasha advises her not to count Willow out yet, but Nina says Willow recoiled when she got the news of what she done, and she only has herself to blame. Sasha insists what's done is done, now she must focus on how to correct it. Sasha thinks that she and Willow have one thing in common, a remarkable capacity for forgiving. Nina is worried Sunny will never forgive her. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.